Uh, several of us are getting together to go over to uh, Pavia in Italy to dedicate the Biblioteca International, which is an uh, international martial arts library. It's being sponsored by uh, one of the grandmasters in our martial arts fraternity. Uh, yes, this is also one of the uh, functions that we'll be doing while we're in Italy this time. Uh, every 50 years or so, uh, the Grand Masters of a lot of the different styles get together and establish certain guidelines and, and rules for uh, how the martial arts are supposed to be uh, presented to the world at large for the next few years. Uh, the last convention like this uh, was held in 1957 in Hawaii by uh, the Grand Masters of uh, most of the Japanese styles that were becoming popular at that time. Uh, after World War II, uh, and during World War II, the, the uh, people started studying Judo, and that was the only Oriental martial art that you could actually practice. Uh, shortly after World War II, people started hearing about uh, Karate, which meant empty hand, and several styles started becoming uh, popular, becoming known at that time. And the Grand Masters of the various systems got together and decided that because of the nature of the martial arts, uh, that everybody should start off with the same basic five kata or forms. That's why, as you see in all the different systems like uh, Goju, Shotokan, and Wadoru, Ishinru, especially the uh, Japanese and the uh, Korean hard style martial arts, the first five forms that you learn are all the same. Uh, that way there's a certain amount of uh, conformity and, and unity among the different systems. And then once you get above black belt level, the first five forms are used basically to test the student. If he learns all of those and he achieves black belt, then he's ready to actually learn the techniques that are part of that particular system. And uh, this particular council that we're having this time is going to relax a lot of those type of standards, I think, because it's not... Uh, uh, there's so many different styles that are available now, and so many. Each one of them has something particular to offer. That uh, uh, a lot of these standards, I think, are going to be relaxed uh, after this particular uh, conference. Well, the fact is that they were historically only ruthless assassins uh, when they had to be. Uh, most of the people that studied the particular system of ninjutsu that I practiced, which came from the Koga province of uh, ancient Japan, uh, were just very good hunters and farmers and, and uh, peasants, essentially, who were in harmony with the, with the land. And because of their skills as hunters and, and uh, uh, warriors, when the time came to defend themselves, they took the most efficient method. And the most efficient method was instead of trying to put two armies in the field of a bunch of people that didn't really want to fight in the first place, they would just go and kill the general or the king or whoever happened to be causing the war and stop it that way. Um, and of course this is a much more efficient way of handling things. And because they were in harmony with nature, they didn't feel the need to take credit for this sort of activity. And, uh, and so very often uh, the king or the prince or the warlord who was starting or, or a general who was starting a, a, an impending battle would just uh, uh, be found dead in the morning. And uh, nobody would know whether he was poisoned or whether he'd been stabbed or whether an acupuncture or a dim muck point had been used against him. Uh, as long as he wasn't there to lead the army, the war was off. And so, uh, uh, plus they were also, this particular area of Japan was pretty isolated and very difficult to get in there with a large army. And these guys were also masters of, of uh, disinformation. And so when the Shogun finally did come to kill them all, after they had helped him get into power, uh, he came with an army that was about ten times bigger than he needed because the, he believed that they were that powerful and they had that many people there. And actually it was a very small group of people that he was dealing with. So uh, that's the main difference between uh, the historical image of the ninja. Even though they use the assassin uh, character as, as uh, part of their... Uh, uh, psychological warfare. Ah, uh, yes, but they have heard of me. Mostly it's jealousy. Uh, from people who've never been anywhere or done anything, and they're jealous of anybody who has done anything. And the rest of the criticism is mostly judgmental. 
and uh, there's a great episode of Kung Fu where uh, Kwai Chan Kane is talking to uh, Master Po about the, the different levels that the lotus blossoms have achieved as they come up from the bottom of the pool. Some of them are just at the bottom, some are halfway to the surface, and some have blossomed on the top. And he asked the old man, he says, should I seek to measure these differences? And Master Po says, no, just treat each according to its level. And that's what you have to do with these people. They're, they're not at a high level. They haven't blossomed yet. They haven't learned enough to really understand what's important. And so you have to just treat them like the children that they are because they're just jealous. And uh, once they practice long enough, then they'll, they'll get beyond this stage and, and uh, they may actually learn something and become better people. Well, most of them uh, have nothing of their own that they can present, and so you can't put a lot of, of faith in, in anything that they say. And they're very good at finding things wrong with what other people do, but they don't present anything that they can be criticized on themselves. So it's, uh, it's the old, uh, uh, easy for a dog to bark when, when he's behind the fence attitude. Uh, yes. Um, work out every day on my own just to stay in shape and, and uh, keep myself fit and trim and healthy. Uh, do a seminar from time to time uh, with different classes and schools in the area. Uh, the last few years I've been doing quite a bit of traveling. Went to uh, uh, Germany in 2006 and uh, did a few seminars there for uh, our local affiliate school. And uh, then uh, after that went to, uh, to Italy where we're going again now for this Black Belt Council and uh, did some seminars there for about a week. And uh, before that, I went to travel to Australia and some of these other different countries, Brussels, places like that. Mostly getting together with other martial artists and sharing the techniques and the philosophy that we have. Uh, yes, I've uh, been lucky enough to travel around a little bit and, and uh, see some other parts of the world and be able to share some of the techniques that, uh, that I've learned with some of these other people. In the old days, uh, the ninja used to travel around the countryside and they would look for a kingdom where the, the people were happy and well fed. And then they would go to the local king and they would uh, uh, offer to teach him the secrets of longevity so that his kingdom would endure and his people would continue to be happy for a long time. And so uh, fortunately that's what I've been able to do here in the last few years is, is go to these different places and exchange techniques with people and, and help them to keep their businesses going and to keep their schools going uh, so that we can spread this, this message that martial arts is not about fighting, it's about self-improvement. And the longer you're in it, the better you get. And uh, the longer you're in it, the healthier you become. And it's come, there's coming a time when everybody's going to be healthy and when everybody's going to wake up and, and realize what's important in the world. And we're the leaders of that movement, uh, whether we choose to be or not, because we understand these things and because we're willing to help other people understand them. Uh, you can't explain transcendental things, but if you show the guy how to do the exercise, he can experience it for himself, and he understands it, and you both have a, have a significant experience out of it. Uh, and, uh, and like Bruce Lee said, the trick is to be like water, just to relax, and let things happen. You can't push the river, and, and you can't be fighting all the time, but you can be training all the time, and that's what makes it fun.